in in terms of uh, of the sort of team that we'll see next season, whenever whenever that that starts, are you are you taking a different approach to to this year's recruitment? Have you got a different idea in mind, or have have you have you seen how you could have changed things from from last year to get to get a sort of the better potential out of the team? A little bit of a mix, really. Um, you, you know, like for example, um, I'll just branch off to the side a little bit, but it'll sum up our team a little bit. Um, our special teams have been um, right near the top of the league for for the last couple of seasons. Um, this season, they took a significant dip um, in terms of statistics, um, and you know convincing um, ourselves and, and the guys that it wasn't systematic, it was more the work rate, um, it really take, took a long time to sink in. Our power play at the end of the season um, was trending in a, in a strong, uh, positive direction. And it wasn't because anything changed. It was because the work rate went up and our puck recovery and, and the ability to hold on to the puck um, you, you know, it was like night and day um, to watching power plays, um, you know, near the end of December, start of January. Um, that work rate probably could go right through our lineup. Uh, in the games where we brought that work rate, um, they proved to themselves that um, they had the abilities to play with any team in the league. Um, but when that work rate dropped, whether it was for three minutes in a game, five minutes or, or periods, um, you know, we lost a lot of games that we probably didn't need to lose. So as far as um, uh, recruitment process is going, um, there, there will be guys that we're interested in bringing back. Um, I think it's important to bring, um, you know, some fresh blood into the, into the lineup. Um, just bring that hunger factor back in. Um, and, you know, just come in with that, that breath of fresh air um, that an extended break, break has given us. An interesting thing that you, you, you said there in the, at the start of, uh, of, of that answer and kind of sort of looking back to um, conversations that we had at the start of last season, quite often we'd, we'd come off the back of a, uh, of a win and we'd go into post-match um, and, uh, and I think the building was, was kind of sort of bouncing and, and you were almost urging a note of caution saying, well, yeah, yeah, we got the win, but actually there's there's still things that we need need to almost like you were saying back then look you know this this might not this might not be the um the success that you think it's going to be yeah well i mean looking back in hindsight is a wonderful thing um and we knew about it at points throughout the season i i really feel that it was probably a two-player fix um it would have just injected that little bit of life we needed uh around the end of October, start of November. Um, and even, even before that crucial Christmas uh, period that we had where we just that started off that, that bad run we had, um, just an injection of life um, would have just maybe provided that catalyst that they needed to push them over the edge. I mean, you, you know, you and I talked about the slimmest of margins um, in some of these games. Um, and, and it was, we just, didn't always have it to get it over the finish line. And I think that was the frustrating part. Always got to the point where, you know, in some games, I think about the Nottingham game, uh, when we put the puck in our own net um, in the last minute of the game, it was almost like we were got in the mentality for a while where we were waiting for bad things to happen. Um, and, it, and when we finally got those shackles off our back, we were playing some better hockey towards the end of the year. Um, we, did, we just didn't realize our full, full potential. During this lockdown time, obviously times have been tough for, for lots of people. And, and especially in, in Fife, there's, um, I imagine a lot of our, our fans aren't working at the moment and there's only so far that things like furlough and whatnot will, will help. It's, yes. It must be quite heartening, though, to see that um, – when, when the fans have been called on, so with our, our two short of the back raffles at the start of the year, uh, start of the, the off season, that that they, they they kind of sort of rallied to the cause and they, they raised a lot of money for the uh, NHS and Fife and also for um, our, our chosen charity, Chaz, as well. 
There was no doubt about it. Um, the people um, here in Fife are some of the most generous and, and giving people, um, you know, to good causes. Uh, certainly the teams are, has been associated with over the years. I think it's a wonderful thing that they come together um, and, and we'll be able to, we're able to make that, you know, small difference in people's lives off the back of, of people's wonderful generosity in that building. And just finally, um, I mean, obviously none of us have got a crystal ball and, you know, I don't think um, either the Scottish or, or British governments have an idea of, of when things are going to, going to come back. But um, do you have an idea in your head of sort of when, you're going to have some news for people and some news of signings and, 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 uh, and players returning. Yeah. I mean, I think, okay. So as far as, um, you know, local guys, uh, I've spoken to all our local guys. I know exactly where they stand. Um, and I know where I stand. Um, you know, our local guys, um, or our British players rather are, um, key, key parts of this lineup that I, I think it's important that, um, these guys are wrapped up early and, um, and announced as soon as they're signed. Um, and as far as imports go, um, the guys that I want back, um, generally know where I stand. Um, and, and as soon as they start easing lockdown here and we get a, an idea of a projected start date. Um, you, you know, it's important that we get news out to fans. Um, you know, a big concern of mine is, and I'll voice my thoughts on it. I think that getting people safely into the Fife Ice Arena um, is going to be a very challenging thing. Um, you've heard me speak, you know, in the past, the importance of of a gate, um, regardless if a season goes forward or not, our fixed costs are going to remain the same. Um, there is big, big challenges for the elite league up ahead. I think people want some sport back just to take their minds off of, um, being cooped up and, and all the bad news we've been hearing about, um, every day when we open the newspapers. Um, and, and I think it would be a great thing for this community, but it has to be done safely. And, um, one of the biggest disasters, what if we rushed it through, and um, we ended up bringing over everybody and they had to cancel the, the season early, um, real early, um, because we were, we were devastated by a second wave. So um, we're working behind the scenes. Um, I just hope everybody stays safe and um, we'll have news for people hopefully shortly. And I guess playing behind closed doors is just never going to work for hockey, for, for clubs that are, are, are dependent on that income of bodies in the rink. It is. I mean, there's no TV money in hockey, as, as you know. Um, and, you, you know, webcasts, I think, are a wonderful thing. It's extended our audience, but I don't think that webcasts is the, the core of the income for the club. It's, it's people in that building watching ice hockey matches. And, um, you know, I, I think that um, certainly the way our building's laid out, there's some big challenges ahead. Todd, thanks very much for chatting to us this afternoon and uh, hopefully the next time we, we speak we'll have some more positive news and we'll be able to start announcing, uh, announcing player signings. Sounds great. Thanks a lot, Ali.